This is your WLAK Daily News Roundup for Lake Air, 107.5 FM and 1260 AM in Amory. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. September 11th, remembrance is all over Wisconsin today. Flags are at half-staff to honor all who died 23 years ago. Governor Evers is encouraging acts of service. Nearly 3,000 people died after terrorists hijacked four passenger planes and crashed them. Civic Media political editor Dan Schaefer says Vice President Kamala Harris won last night's debate. On substance, on style, on so many different aspects, Uh, Kamala Harris had Donald Trump on his heels really from the very beginning, and he was never really able to recover. And it it just felt like the same rambling Trump show uh, that we've seen so many times over the last eight or nine years. Schaefer says Harris's performance will make the most favorable impression on undecided voters who are just starting to pay attention to the race. The Wisconsin Supreme Court will rule on whether mobile voting vans can be used in future elections. Justices heard oral arguments yesterday. A ruling is not expected until after the November election. Senator Tammy Baldwin says Wisconsin may have fewer doctors if abortion isn't codified nationwide. Savannah Tomei Olson reports. Med schools here in the Badger State had a 10 percent drop in applications after the Dobbs decision. We are going to have uh, severe issues in serving the needs of uh, of women in the state of Wisconsin. The Women's Health Protection Act would codify Roe v. Wade nationwide. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. Baldwin's opponent, Eric Hovde, supports an abortion ban after 12 to 14 weeks of pregnancy and says voters in each state should put the question to a referendum. People in Wisconsin have lower concentrations of forever chemicals in their blood than people in other states. That's according to a newly published PFAS study from the University of Wisconsin. Researchers found people who eat fish on a regular basis have higher levels than most. So do older white men who make more money. People in Wisconsin have a chance to see the northern lights again starting tonight. NOAA is predicting a minor geomagnetic storm tonight and tomorrow night. Unfortunately, it's also supposed to be too cloudy in Wisconsin for sky gazers to get a good look. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. Minnesota Governor and Vice Presidential Candidate Tim Walz will visit his home state this weekend on the campaign trail. On Saturday, Governor Walz plans to make a campaign stop in Superior before hopping over the state border to make another stop in Duluth. It will be the first presidential campaign stop in Duluth and Superior this election cycle. Governor Walz has previously campaigned across Wisconsin, including a western Wisconsin stop for a rally with Vice President Kamala Harris in Eau Claire a few weeks ago. There are new life-saving emergency kits available for schools in Barron and Rusk counties. Marshfield Clinic Health System has announced the installation of 43 Nalox boxes across the region, with 32 of them located in Barron and Rusk counties. The boxes contain Narcan nasal spray, instructions on how to administer it, a CPR mask, and gloves. The kits were installed in schools across the area like Rice Lake, Cameron, and more. When a box is opened, it will also trigger an alarm in the schools to alert staff to the situation. The city of Duluth is proposing $14 million in tax assistance for Sofidel, a paper manufacturing company that recently acquired the Duluth paper mill property. City officials say the incentive could create up to 160 new jobs in the area. They also say the company is planning an expansion as part of the $250 million investment project, but they need some financial assistance to make it a reality. Officials are looking into a tax increment financing tool to help and will vote on that package in October. The St. Louis County Board has given initial approval to the proposed maximum tax levy for 2025. The proposal would increase the tax levy by 7.2 percent, but county officials assured residents that the jump is below the growth of the tax base, so many homeowners won't see an increase in their taxes at all. They say because there's been so much residential growth, there are more taxpayers to contribute to reaching their goal. The county board will host two public meetings on it, and it must be finalized by the end of the month. Duluth Mayor Roger Reinhart unveiled his 2025 budget proposal on Monday night. Mayor Reinhart says his budget proposal focuses on public safety, maintenance of city facilities and parks, and capturing new tax base growth. The budget would include a 1.8% property tax levy increase to provide more funding for things like transportation, planning and economic development, and parks. Mayor Reinhart says the main focus of his budget proposal is creating new housing and upgrading commercial facilities in the city. 
The Great Lakes St. Lawrence Legislative Caucus held their annual meeting in Duluth on Monday with a focus on the state of the Great Lakes amid environmental concerns. Regional leaders shared some of the work they've been doing to address the climate change problems in their areas of the lakes, like replacing trees that have been cut down by disease. The caucus is planning to plant 250 million trees over the next decade in the hopes that the trees will help preserve the shores of the Great Lakes for years to come. Construction on new city-owned internet infrastructure in Superior has broken ground. On Friday, the Connect Superior project officially got underway near Baxter Avenue and North 16th Street. The project seeks to connect about 850 homes in the area to a new fiber network with plans to expand to every neighborhood in the city. This portion of the project will cost about $7 million of the 40 to $60 million it will take to connect the entire city over five to eight years. The funding was provided by pandemic-era relief money. Superior residents spoke against a proposed utility rate increase at a public meeting on Monday. Residents say they're already making sacrifices due to increased prices and they can't afford the proposed increase by Superior Water, Light and Power. The rate increase would see an overall jump of 5.9% across three utilities and the average resident would pay an extra $26 per month. The final decision on the rate increase will be made by the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin sometime in November. And that's what you need to know. For WLAK News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers start their road trip off with a win. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cuska with Sports, filling in for Mike Clemens. Milwaukee did just enough to get a 3-2 win over the San Francisco Giants on Tuesday. Manager Pat Murphy said the offense had its struggles after getting two early runs in a game dominated by pitching. Guys competed, and the, the McGill and Williams at the end were really good. and thought it was a good effort by our pitching staff for sure and our defense, and then and then obviously um, coming out and getting two early runs. Tough night to hit, but still it was a pitcher-dominated game. We made a couple mistakes on the bases that cost us runs maybe. Game two in the series is tonight. It's the second game of a six-game swing out west. Without quarterback Jordan Love available this week due to a sprained MCL, the Packers will go with Malik Willis, who they traded for this preseason. Willis played at the very end of the game with Philadelphia last week. Coach Matt LaFleur said they are getting Willis ready for Indianapolis on Sunday. you got to play to your players' strengths, so it's our job to try to come up with whatever we come up with in order to put him in a position to be successful. It'll be the Packers and the Colts this Sunday as each team tries for its first win. And on Saturday, one of college football's top programs comes to Madison. Wisconsin will play host to Alabama. Kickoff is at 11 a.m. This week, Civic Media stations have a full slate of high school football. Download the free Civic Media app and don't miss a snap this season. Filling in for Mike Clemens, I'm Jimmy Cusco with Civic Media Sports. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Rapper Kendrick Lamar will take time off from his feud with Canadian rapper Drake to headline the Super Bowl halftime show in February. Does he have big expectations? Yahoo Entertainment reports the 37-year-old rap phenom says he intends to remind viewers why rap music is the most impactful genre there is. The Super Bowl halftime show will be sponsored by Apple Music and Rock Nation and probably go on a bit too long. And how can this be possible but really want it to be news? There will finally be a sequel to The Goonies. It only took 40 years. Even more shocking, most of the main characters are returning. Yikes. Chris Columbus, who wrote the original as well as Home Alone, is expected to write the new script. My guess is that this time around, the friends are trying to save their assisted living facility and challenge the developers to a shuffleboard off while eating boiled meat. The sequel to The Goonies is scheduled to start filming next year and will most likely be released in 26 or 27. I almost feel sorry for the Kardashians. They just want to be left alone, but attention seems to find them. Take Dream Kardashian, for example. She's had a really big week, making her modeling debut, walking the runway with sass and attitude, creating a new Instagram page, and recently releasing her first single, a saucy tune called Besties Do It Better. The really amazing part? She's seven and in second grade. Oh, but don't worry, there is serious parental oversight. Dream's parents are Black China and Rob Kardashian, the youngest and chubbiest of the Kardashian brood. I'll just leave you with a sample size of the lyrics for Besties Do It Better. It's Dream, I'm on the scene, and I'm the queen. There's no time to be mean. Besties do it better. That's my friend forever. I want my friend forever. Besties do it better. Her parents are terrible songwriters. They should have asked Uncle Kanye for help. Actress Drea DiMatteo says that when she auditioned for The Sopranos, she thought it was a show about opera. 
DiMatteo played the character Adriana on the show that ran for six seasons, and she's not the only cast member who at first thought the show was music-related. Jamie Lynn Sigler, who played Meadow Soprano, also thought she was auditioning for a show about singers, primarily because she had little TV experience and her background was in musical theater. Sigler told Justin Long on his Life is Short podcast that while at the audition, she did not see an accompanist, so she offered to sing a cappella for creator David Chase, the series producer who seemed confused. Interestingly enough, neither Sigler or DiMatteo figured out the show was not about music until season three. I made that last part up. These and other fun stories about The Sopranos can be viewed in the new documentary Wise Guy, David Chase and The Sopranos, airing on Max. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to be sunny and warm and not really all that humid here for much of the upcoming week. Today, partly cloudy with a high in the low 80s. The wind will be out of the south at 5 to 15. Tonight, partly cloudy, upper 50s. Tomorrow, sunshine with a high in the mid 80s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it is 60. That's your WLAK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at lakeair.radio.